Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with Circworks Art Labs. Welcome back to the Underground Laboratory where I create robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. We also create comics. We are working on the 100 Days of Making Comics Challenge where you spend 30 minutes a day every day for 100 days straight working on your own personal comic book project. My personal comic book project is this one right here. Young and the Dead, it's a kids versus zombies story. I've got three issues available online. I'm working on issue four. That's what this challenge is all about. I am actually working on my second round. I've done this whole thing before. Why am I doing it again? That's crazy, but I am. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty far along. I'm more than halfway done, So, uh, but I still, I still got a ways to go. So, But we are doing this challenge, uh, and I'm letting you guys know. That's what these videos are for, to let you guys know how that progress is going, and hopefully you guys can hold me accountable and make sure that I'm on my game and I'm not slipping. And so far, <laughs> this thing has been pretty rough because uh, these videos I'm, I put a little more into the video making part of it so it's taking some time away from the actual comic book making process but I'm still putting in those 30 minutes a day I'd like to do more um, but I like making these videos too so anyway enough talk about that where are we what, what are we doing like yesterday we were talking about character design from a visual perspective um, and now I wanted to sort of move into uh, when you're developing your characters personality wise so but before we get to that <laughs> I always I always forget this part so we've got this big fat sheet of paper we also got the big fat sharpie and we have to figure out where we are in the challenge so we are at day 58 day 58 of the challenge that's where we are we write it down on our pad so we always remember you know where we are so we don't lose track because like I almost forgot to do that so and then uh, then I'd be lost but but back to what we were talking about uh, yesterday we're gonna move on to um, you know when we're creating our characters because a lot of you people are just starting off in this challenge a lot more people are getting involved and you're probably in that process right now so I kind of wanted to rewind even though most of my characters have already been created and it's just a matter of making sure that they're, you know, <laughs> that they stay true to who they are. But I thought I would sort of revisit some of that stuff. So I wanted to talk about personality. And um, so when I was growing up, I want to give you two sort of examples, sort of the same characters but different approaches. And when I was growing up, and I'm kind of old school, so when I was growing up, just a little kid we had a show called Super Friends and I don't know some of you younger people look it up online it's kind of silly it's kind of crazy but for me at that time you didn't really get to see a lot of your favorite superheroes on film nowadays I mean it's it's awesome I mean they're all over the place in animation and in real you know in live action and everything but back in the days uh, you were kind of hard-pressed to find some of your characters leaping off the comic book page so I was a big fan of the Super Friends show um, but the thing is, you've got, and I, I think I th the thing I liked most about that show is, like I said, seeing these characters that you don't see kind of, you know, off the page. So anytime a special, because they had their core ha characters. So you have Superman, Batman, you have Aquaman, Wonder Woman, and uh, I think those were the those were the core. And Robin, a lot of times, was in it. So anytime you had a guest star. Um, like the Flash would show up or Green Lantern would show up or, or you know something like that. It was always like, oh man, this is awesome. Um, Hawkman, whoever. So, but the, the thing, looking back at Super Friends and the reason why I liked it so much was was basically just seeing my characters. But when you look back, you start to realize a lot of the characters on that show are basically the same person just in a different costume. They're always just this super heroic, you know, the, their personality was all all the same from Superman to Batman, Flash, you know, Aquaman. They all had kind of almost the similar voice, the similar cadence, everything, very similar. Um, so, you know, as time goes on and the superheroes become more popular and we put out more shows, 
Um, then came a show called in the 90s, uh, well, I think it was 90s or was it 2000s? I don't know. But like Justice League came out. And Justice League took a lot of those characters and gave them each distinct personalities. And that's something you're, and it's, it's night and day as far as, you know, getting invested in your characters when they, when they're different, when they, when each of them can kind of interact with each other in, in different ways. And, and, you know, so they weren't all just this super heroic. They had, they, you know, they had more to of them. Uh, Batman, of course, you know, I mean, this is just like a given nowadays, but kind of dark and brooding, whereas before in Super Friends, he was just like Superman. Um, you know, the Flash was kind of a wisecracking guy, you know, he was, you know, and, you know, the visual design was different too. They weren't, you know, you could take the old Super Friends show and take the same body type and just switch them out with the exception of maybe, maybe Wonder Woman. So anyway, if you want to compare those two cartoons, like I said, just go online, find a clips and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about if you're not familiar. But something to think about when you're designing your characters. So, uh... You can sit there and you can write out all your characters and what their personalities are, and and that's a good way to do it. You know, if you're especially if you're design, if you're doing like something fantasy or something that doesn't take place in the real world, sometimes you need to do that. Uh, for me, one of the things that I do is I I like because my characters are all kids, and it's sort of loosely based on when I was a kid. So if I was a kid and there was a zombie apocalypse, how me and my friends would behave in a situation like that. So a lot of the characters are based on people I knew. So it, for me it's kind of a shortcut. So I can say that, um, you know, what, what would this particular character do in a situation, in this certain situation? And I could just look to a friend or a couple of friends. Sometimes I mix, mix friends up into one character or whatever. So I can kind of say what this particular person, how he would behave or she would behave or whatever. But some of the things you want to think about when you're creating characters, uh, one of the main things I want you to think about is what do they want? What does the particular character want? What are they trying to achieve in the story? And that will help define your character quite a bit. Um, you know, what, what flaws do they have? What makes them human? What, you know, and how how do they interact with each other character? Not every character gets along. Some characters might, you know, <laughs> kind of rub others the wrong way or whatever. Some people might be more buddy-buddy, um, but that's, that's something you want to think about too. And of course, when you're creating characters, you want there to be some sort of conflict. Um, obviously, you've got your protagonist, you've got your antagonist. Now, my story's a little bit different because there is an antagonist there could be an antagonist there's something but it's this there's sort of a mystery on what's behind this zombie apocalypse so in the beginning few issues there's no real antagonist we've got the zombies walking around and they're a threat but they you know they're zombies they don't really have much personality they don't have any personality really they're void of it um, so in order to create some kind of conflict there's a lot of my characters that just don't get along, and so I kind of play up that angle. Um, so that's something to think about. But usually, when you usually you do have, you know, you've got your good guy and your bad guy, and a lot, you know, there's the idea that your your villain is like the exact opposite of your of your hero. So, you know, you got you got your arch rivals, you've got Superman who's, you know, got super strength. Um, and of course he does have some villains that are similar to that, that have super strength and everything. You need those, but his his main villain is Lex Luthor, who's not, you know, he's just a normal guy, but his you know, it's his, you know, his mind. He's super intelligent and that's what sort of, and not that Superman's you know not intelligent but but there is a difference there uh, same thing with you know the Joker and Batman the Joker is just total chaos where Batman is very methodical and planned out and everything like that so uh, but this doesn't really so much apply to my story like I said so I've got to find other you know ways to do it and that's you know that's what I do with uh, some of my characters so let, let me kind of show you here so we've got uh, and we'll go into this. A I think we'll go into this a little more tomorrow. I want to talk more about dialogue because that's another important part of you know developing your characters. But we've got we've got uh, this character Ox and this character Rocky, 
and they absolutely do not like each other and uh, well you know what I think I'm gonna save some of that for tomorrow because this intro is getting late I want to get into creating the actual comic book and we'll talk more about this tomorrow I'm trying to keep these intros a little short but they seem to be going on and on so uh, I think I think we're gonna go to the parallelescope and see where we are in the process but I want you to start thinking about stuff like this and if you guys have questions uh, leave them in the chat or what do you guys do to develop, to develop your characters what are some of your tricks and things like that um, but we're gonna go up here to the parallelescope and uh, see what's going on that was a bit of a long intro so we'll probably keep the drawing portion of uh, this episode to a minimum um, plus I'm not doing anything super exciting well it's exciting for me because I'm, I'm actually getting started on this double page spread and I decided to do this one um, traditionally as opposed to doing my sketching in Manga Studio because I was having those problems with my printer which has been fixed so so from now on hopefully I'll be able to just design that stuff but I already kind of planned to do all this and everything so anyway so we're getting back and like I said before this is this is where we're picking up from uh, issue three uh, this is issue four so we had three pages that were sort of new that were introducing sort of a new sort of mystery new concept and now we're getting now we're picking up back where that left off and if you've been following along if you have the books and if you've been reading you you know that at the end of page or issue at the end of issue three um, the guys were up in the in the arcade upstairs in the arcade in the offices above the arcade and there's a little like a service elevator and it like dings so something's coming up there um, and we don't quite know what it is but you know spoiler alert in three two one it's zombies so so yeah we've got some zombies showing up and yeah I'm drawing it real faint right now because that's I, I don't I don't like to especially when I'm doing this preliminary sketching traditionally uh, I don't want to lay down some real dark pencils because then there's going to be a lot of erasing and everything of course that's where the digital helps out a lot because you can just undo but but for this since I am doing that it's a little light so I apologize for that you probably can't see what's going on but but I'll continue to show this piece and you'll see how it, it starts to build up and everything it's going to take a little there's a little more going on here than just like a single page but for now check out this really cool art exhibit All right, we're putting a pin in another day of 100 Days of Main Comics, so we're going to say goodbye to day 58. Do what we always do. We're going to crumble this up, toss it in the trash, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for day 59. That is all. Hey everyone, you've seen the process, now you can check out the story. Issues 1 through 3 of Young and the Dead are available at my website at cirqueworks.com. Also follow me on social media at the links listed below. Subscribe and check out some of the other videos in the series. There's much more to come.